The video game business is, is bigger than the film industry. The average gamer is actually 37 years old. About two and a half million people play FIFA every week. One of the big concerns that anybody has about doing anything online is security. The phenomenon that is video gaming has hit stellar proportions. The industry is now worth a staggering $50 billion in revenue with over 300,000 jobs around the globe. In the United States alone, 72% of households play computer or video games. Over the next half hour, we'll dig deep to explore this still growing trade, paying a visit to the largest video gaming conference on the planet, E3, not open to the public, and quite simply, anybody who's anybody in the business is there. We'll take you along as well. But we begin by looking at the world's most popular sport, football, through the eyes of the world's most popular sports video game. Did you know that just like the real World Cup, the sports governing body holds an annual virtual equivalent? Stay with us for the next half hour as we weave our way through the stars of the gaming galaxy. Welcome to Los Angeles, where we've come for a unique behind-the-scenes look at the world of video gaming, culminating in the exciting finale to the FIFA 11 Interactive World Cup right here in Southern California. Our first stop, well, where else would you expect the world's top gaming stars to be? Hiding high up in the Hollywood Hills, of course. How was that drive? Curvy. This is the mansion, this is the base camp for the FIFA 11 Interactive World Cup players. We're now down to the last 24 from five different continents as well. This is where they get to practice, this is where they get to bond. I'm not too sure secrets are being traded right now. It's kind of serious stuff. Let's go inside, take a look. So here's how the tournament goes down. Just like the real World Cup, there was qualifying in regions all over the world. About 900,000 people participated both online or live in person. That got us down to this group of 24 finalists. I'm from Bogota, Colombia. I'm from Germany. I'm from Porto. I'm from Preston, England. I'm from Australia, Sydney. Here in Hollywood, there's even an official draw to break down the plays into groups, out of which emerge four semi-finalists. I caught up with last year's winner, American Nenad Stojkovic, a 23-year-old nursing student from Cleveland, Ohio, now among the many perks of winning the World Cup, a trip to the annual FIFA Ballon d'Or, and to meet the real-life World Player of the Year. I felt like a king, you know? Here am I, I am, I'm just good at a video game, and then you have all these amazing players, athletes, and they're sitting there, they're running around, and they're scoring goals, and, you know, I'm sitting next to them. Those lucky enough to make the final 24 were treated like royalty, a helicopter tour, limo rides, fancy accommodations. Not even I could keep my feet firmly on the ground, especially when given the chance to join them in rarefied air, literally. Wish me well, there's no going back now. My ordeal is now over. I'm back in my normal attire, and the key thing about all this is I survived. Back at the mansion, meantime, the question was, could anyone keep the world champion Ninet Stojkovic from a first ever repeat? I asked Adrian Esteban at 36, the oldest player in the competition. You need a bit of luck, <laughs> uh, but just play your game and be focused. That's the, the approach I took in that last season was just to be focused on what you're doing and play your game and see what happens. It's focus that former U.S. World Cup player Thomas Dooley was focused on. In the past, he'd watched his children play, but had never played the game before himself, but he became an instant fan. And he believes the experience is more than virtual, it's very much real. A lot of people asking me about, Tom, so how was it you play in Mexico, 120,000 people, or here 80,000 people? It's amazing when you have those fans. Actually, you don't really see those fans. You are focused on the square in there and you'll be focused on every single play. And that's a similar thing what I, what I see with those guys. They are so focused on what they're doing in that game that uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's fantastic. All right, it's time for me to get a right footballing lesson, interactively speaking, of course. Then at the reigning world champion is gonna show us how it's done. I've selected Man United for some reason. 
he's going with Real Madrid. And you, 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 you used Real Madrid, didn't you? You've yeah. been using them throughout the tournament. Let's get into the action. Let's get going and see actually what happens, what transpires when I take on a world champion. I don't think it's going to be good. But that's Thank you just, very much. That's just my opinion. How do I get a tackle in? I can't even get near you. You can attack him if you want. You can try and score. My defense is normally pretty solid. Look at this. United play. Shoots. Oh, it's, oh, that wasn't bad. That was good, actually. I'm Did you let me do that? No, I would never let you score. All right, go on. Try and score. You haven't scored past me yet. Um, oh, you just scored. Down. I just gave that to you. Good job, though. Well played. I got it. I've got to concede defeat. You yeah. are uh, super. While Nenad easily took care of me, it was not to be in the real competition. Despite winning five out of five in the group stage, he was beaten by the English champion, Adam Winster. He was joined in the final four by Mark Azzi of Australia, Portugal's Francisco Cruz and Javier Munoz of Colombia. We'll bring you the grand final match. That's later in the show. Well, the gaming world extends way beyond football, of course. When we return, I take you to the biggest video gaming conference in the globe. It's really the best of the best, all the newest stuff in gaming right here in L.A. Stay with us.